Alright, how's everyone doing? Welcome to From Z to A, Alphabetical Interviews with Zach Anderson. I am Zach Anderson. Today we are here at Save Sound Studios for the 62nd edition of Monsters of Acoustic Rock, and I am joined by J.D. Wise. Hi, Zach. How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I'm going to ask you the difficult questions as long as it has something to do with the letters of your name. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start with Jay. Uh, tell me about your musical journey. Uh, when did you first gain interest in music? When did you start playing? Any memorable moments oh. from, say, your first gig together? Sure. Uh, it all started when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beatles just re-released the Yellow Submarine movie mm -hmm. on DVD, and my parents put it in front of me, and that that started it all, man. And I, I took piano lessons beginning that year. Mm -hmm. um, never got that good, but mm -hmm. I, I was banging around on some <laughs> classical honers mm -hmm. in my basement. Right-handed, even though I'm lefty, that, that kind of influenced my right-handedness on guitar. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got a guitar for my eighth birthday and started learning from my dad how to play it, which mm -hmm. was good. And then when I was nine years old, I started taking lessons, um, uh, not really practicing, not falling in love with the <laughs> instrument, yeah. as it were. <laughs> Uh, so I quit by the time I was 12, at which point I was also learning a little bit of bass guitar. Okay. Um, and then one day, my Beatle fandom just came rushing back mm -hmm. and uh, started learning how to play all the songs, teaching myself, and I never looked back. That yeah. was age 14. Alright. Now I'm 29. Nice. Excellent. Um, and if you could describe your style of music in uh, two words, uh, what would you say it would be? Uh, well, let's see. Lyrically, um, I would say that uh, my lyrics come off as idiosyncratic and unapologetic. All right. um, it's almost, um, I've kind of said, um, if I wanted to describe my sound, that it's like, folk rock meets garage rock because mm -hmm. I do most of my stuff on an acoustic guitar right. and then I just like I make it sound very heavy in post-production mm -hmm. but the truth is I cover all kinds of genres and that's that's a lot uh, because of the Beatles yeah yeah so um, all of that to say that um, my music covers a wide spectrum it's both ambivalent and indifferent mm. Two more words to use. Very nice, yes. Uh, and uh, when you're writing a song, you tend to start with music, melody, uh, lyrics? Does it vary song to song? Um, so, melody um, and lyrics come together if I'm like just singing around the house. Yeah. Eventually I'll have a hook to work off of. But sometimes it just sits around for months and months before the rest of the song comes together. Mm -hmm. Other times the song is finished by the end of the evening. Yeah. And uh, one of the songs I'm going to play tonight, I wrote at my piano in about 90 minutes, wow. start to finish. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> and I'm excited to share that with you. Um, other lyrics I will just like jot down in my anecdote book. Mm -hmm. That's what I call my Moleskines, not a sponsor. <laughs> um, and musically, I, I sometimes hit on little riffs and stuff when I'm fooling around, but I always forget to press record, man. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Happens, yeah. But John and Paul had to remember all their songs. They didn't have a recorder, so... Right. <laughs> uh, and you mentioned the Beatles. Uh, who would you say are uh, your... Uh, additional biggest uh, musical influences? Um, well, going off the Beatles, um, obviously there's ELO, mm -hmm. Jeff Lynn. He, he was both the uh, producer and the songwriter for the band, which was pretty heavy. Yeah. And so that kind of inspired my Jack of All Trades piece to my uh, musicality. Mm -hmm. And of course, Paul McCartney did three albums all by himself, which influenced me, and then vocally, I've kind of taken a lot from Paul and John, mm -hmm. but also like uh, Steve Winwood is a big one. Okay, yeah. Um, just all kinds of soulful singers I try to inflect. Yeah. Uh, Eagles, especially, they were the other big band for me while I was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's one of my three facts, but um, part of the reason I'm JD Wise is because of their co-writer JD Souther. Okay. He was a big influence in that regard. Mm -hmm. Nice, excellent. Um, and uh, what would you say you enjoy most about uh, performing live? Uh, what I love most about performing live is the instant reaction. Yeah. And I love all kinds of things about it, like um, the cathartic release of the vocals mm -hmm. and um, the ability to test out new originals yeah. and workshop them over time. You get to come up with the right little pieces of mm -hmm. the full performance, yep. which is very handy. Definitely. Um, and I like to end all my interviews with uh, three interesting or random facts about yourself. Yeah. Uh, you didn't mention one already, uh, so we'll yeah. go with the other two. <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll go back to set yeah. lists okay. because that's another thing I love about live performance is taking requests when they come up. Mm -hmm. It's especially great when it's one of your own. Yeah. But um, usually I just write down a bunch of originals I feel good about and then a bunch of covers I might yeah. want to play if it's one of those gigs. Mm -hmm. If it's Beatles, I try to make them flow in an order. I do a lot of Beatles specific gigs now. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, if it's just originals, I kind of pick the order as I go, but I try to start with an opener or yeah. I'll also like look in my binder and I'll find the lyrics to a song I didn't write down, but I thought I'd try it out and then mm -hmm. it re-enters the repertoire yeah. that way. <laughs> I like what happens. Yeah. Um, so three facts. One is um, the inspiration behind J.D. Wise. Right. My, my full name is Jacob Debs Wiseman. Yeah. Uh, Debs as in Eugene Debs. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I never really liked that name. And I tried all kinds of um, stage names, especially in college. My big one was Humanity's Sake, which was also my handle on... Uh, the Quinnipiac radio station, WQAQ, um, because uh, the name of my show was Give It Up For Humanity's Sake, <laughs> and that's how I got introduced at all the Battle of the yeah, Bands yeah. run by the station, mm -hmm. um, but uh, right before my senior year, I hit upon J.D. Wise with the help of uh, my high school friend who always referred to her dad by his first two initials, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it kind of came together with the J.D. Souther thing, yeah. and yeah, it's funny, like, I never was inspired by J.D. Salinger mm -hmm. like that, <laughs> right. but there's a reference to his novel on the upcoming album, oh, which sure. is kind of fun. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so I started as Humanity's Sake in college, and then my real name was Jacob Debs Wiseman, uh, but going way back when I was nine years old, 20 years ago, I... I met the one and only Carol King cool. at a phone bank for the Carrie campaign, All right. uh, which was pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it definitely was one of those things that made me proud to be a songwriter. Yeah. Um, at the time, I didn't realize who she was, though, which was weird. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was getting my picture taken, everybody's saying, you've got a friend. And then kind of, I kind of pieced it together there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was really proud to be there with her, and I wish I still had her autograph from that uh -huh. meeting. Eh. So, yeah, yeah that, that's all I got. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. Uh, if you want to check out JD Wise, please visit the link below, and now we'll cut to a performance from JD. So thanks again, and we'll see you soon.
Keep them calm.